Welcome to Mon Life Learning's film, Finishing Touches, Fashion Accessories from the Past. The objects I'm going to talk about today are not out on display in our museums. They are usually in our museum stores at Abergavenny, Chepstow and Monmouth, so it's really great to be able to share objects with you that not many people get to see. In this film, I'm going to share with you a selection of fashion accessories which were popular in times past. Some of them may be familiar to you, but I hope that others will be a bit more of a curiosity. We hope that you enjoy seeing the objects and that they create opportunities to chat and reminisce about your favourite ways to dress up an outfit or the objects you use to help you get ready. So that you can continue the conversation, I've included a craft activity at the end of the film. I'm going to show you how to make a felt pouch that you can use to keep your special trinkets in. Our first item is a tobacco or snuff box. It's made of brass and has a hinged lid and is small enough to be kept in a pocket. Two button sliders keep the box closed and a keyhole suggests that it could also be locked. The most intriguing thing about this box is that it has three decorative but functional dials on its lid. You can rotate the pointers around the dials so that they point to a number from 1 to 12, a bit like a clock face. Perhaps the owner set the dials at the time he wanted to take his snuff or tobacco. On the back of the box is a decorative pattern of V-shapes and the words E. Jones 1911. Inside the box you can just make out the reverse of the lettering. Snuff or tobacco boxes were often given as gifts. Perhaps E. Jones received this box as a present. Our next items are this fabulous brown leather Victorian ladies boot and a button hook. This style of boot is typical of the 19th century. It has a low heel, 11 buttons and scalloped button tabs up the outside of the boot. It is lined with cotton. The buttons themselves are rounded and attached to the boot with a metal shank. There are three buttons missing and there is a large gash on the side of the boot and a chunk missing from the sole. We don't know how this damage came to be there, or what happened to the other boot. To help people with the fiddly task of fastening the buttons, many people used a button hook. The hook is inserted through the buttonhole, then you hook the shank of the button and ease it through the buttonhole. Button hooks were commonplace objects in Victorian and Edwardian homes, but the objects themselves can be anything but ordinary. Our button hook has a silver handle, although very tarnished, and scroll decorations on the sides. The next item comes from a time when ladies' skirts were long and often had trains. The condition of streets and roads meant that the hems of skirts very quickly became dirty and frayed. This little item called a skirt lifter, was an ingenious device designed to hold the hem of the skirt off the ground. It was attached to the waistband of the skirt with a hook, then the clamp or tongs were fastened to the skirt and the metal ring pushed down to hold them in place. Our final object is a pink and white stocking purse decorated with silver beads. This style of purse was also known as a long purse or miser's purse. This style of purse was very popular up until the late 19th century. Our example is from around 1840. The fabric of the purse is made either through knitting, netting or crocheting. This makes the purse quite stretchy and enables it to expand. Our purse is crocheted and has ivory rings, also known as sliders, and ivory finials at either end. You move the slider across, pop your coins into the central slit, and push the slider back to close the gap. Both men and women use this style of purse from at least the 18th century. Purses and pouches are a great way of keeping things safe and protected, so why not have a go at making your own felt pouch to put your keepsakes in? You will need a rectangle of felt or other fabric which does not fray, scissors, 
a needle and thread or fabric glue and a button. Start by placing your rectangle of felt on a flat surface with a short edge at the bottom. Fold up the bottom edge of the felt, aligning the side edges and leaving a single layer of felt extending at the top. Now glue or sew the open sides together. You can see on this example I've used a blanket stitch, but you could use a running stitch or overcast stitch, or simply glue the edges if you would rather not sew. Next, fold over the top flap to decide where to position your button. Sew on the button, then fold over the flap again and mark the position for a vertical slit to act as a buttonhole. Carefully cut a slit with your scissors, making sure you don't cut right through to the edge of the fabric. You now have a finished felt pouch. We hope that you have fun doing this activity and that it sparks lots of conversations. If you've enjoyed this film, why not take a look at our other films in the series? Over the Counter, Shops and Shopping, Child's Play, Toys and Games from Bygone Days, and Making Your Mark, Exploring Print and Pattern. Thank you for watching and see you next time.